Today, we're checking in on the latest in the world of AutoGPT and AI agents. Welcome back to the AI Breakdown. One of the interesting things about following artificial intelligence is that there are very different conversations that are going on under that banner in different parts of the internet at any given time. There is, of course, the AI safety conversation in one sector, the AI policy conversation in another, and then there are the much more practical conversations. People reskilling, figuring out how to use different tools and where they actually fit into their jobs. And then there are the developers. The builders, the entrepreneurs, the people who are hacking at AI systems and exploring the frontiers of what's possible. One of the biggest themes for that cohort this year has, of course, been AI agents. If ChatGPT got the regular consumer's imagination going about the possibilities of artificial intelligence, I feel like something similar happened for a lot of developers and hackers around the beginning of April when it came to AI agents. The dream is to move towards systems that can actually not only spit back information, but figure out how to solve problems without a lot of guidance along the way. Now, one of the big progenitors of this whole movement, or at least one of the first things that got people excited this year, was of course AutoGPT that was published to GitHub by Sig Gravitas back in April and raced to become the most active project on that site within the first couple weeks, and which has seen, if not the same sort of parabolic increase that it saw in those first couple weeks, still a really steady increase. The project is up over 140,000 stars on GitHub right now as a for example. Now, there are two really interesting things going on right now in the world of AutoGPT. The first is something they're calling their AutoGPT Arena Hacks. It's a virtual hackathon that comes not only with cash prizes, but the inducement that the winning agent will become the default AutoGPT in that 150,000 star repository that we were just discussing. The hackathon has four categories. Scrape and Synthesize, Data Mastery, Coding Excellence, and Open-Ended Agent Protocol. They write, Your task is to develop an agent that takes natural language input and can handle tasks, either generalist like AutoGPT or specific as with TaskGPT. In terms of prizes, the top-performing generalist agent gets that position as the primary AutoGPT in the repository plus $15,000 in cash, and then the top project in Scrape and Synthesize, which means extracting data from the web and creating data set summaries and plans as requested, wins $3,500, which is the same for Data Mastery, which they characterize as perform essential data science tasks, including imputation, labeling, and sorting. Coding Excellence has two prizes, a first place prize of $4,000 and a second place prize of $1,000, and refers to, quote, master the art of coding by building functions, CLI games, password shorteners, web servers, and more. And finally, a $3,000 prize for open-ended agent protocol. This is their catch-all for any big innovation that might not fit cleanly into one of the other categories. Because the project is run on public benchmarks, there's also a leaderboard showing which teams are ahead at any given time. Now, in the same way that an in-person hackathon might have a set of speakers and mentors, this event, although held online, has something similar. There are a group of speakers and mentors, and an entire schedule of different events and conversations that include keynotes, Q&As, and more. And yet what specifically prompted this episode today was that in addition to this online virtual event, AutoGPT also held an in-person hackathon over last weekend. Alex Rebin tweeted, This weekend, AI engineers from around the world flew to SF to beat, build, and break state-of-the-art AI agents. Powered by AutoGPT, these hackers spent 24 hours testing the limits of what's possible. Now, interestingly, Alex also shared the finalists at the event. One finalist was called Auto Arena, and Alex summed it up as better observability and session replays for agents using the Web Arena dataset. That was also the team that Alex was on. A second finalist was Improving the Tutorial, a series of recommendations and bug fixes to make it easier to build applications with AutoGPT Forge, which he summed up as basically an AutoGPT bug bash. Travelmate was created by a team who came all the way from Argentina and was basically a use case specific agent that could research, plan, and answer questions about different vacation itineraries. Interestingly, in Travelmate's demo of what they had built, they showed off why this could be more valuable than just a standard travel website. The example they used was the user asking a question, I heard talk about a parallel exchange rate for dollars in Argentina. What is that about? Now, what they're referring to is what's called the blue rate in Argentina, which is very different from the official rate published by the government, and which you can find at basically a variety of back alley brokers in cities like Buenos Aires. And the interesting thing was that the team said that they actually programmed it to search the web, but to look specifically for blog posts rather than official sources of information, as it was the type of insight that might not come easily from your standard style of travel websites. Another finalist was called STEM. Alex summed them up as contextually aware, asynchronous alert agents that listen for news, conversations, and other real-time ingress events. The team behind it wrote, Our system STEM, short for stimulus, enables LLM agents to take in real-time information from multiple sources and effectively batch summarize and prioritize incoming info. 
Now, Sam's explanation actually gets at some of the challenges that we've talked about before on the show as it relates to AI agents. He continues, current LLM agents are stuck in a linear call and response structure. You give an agent a task, it runs off and does it and returns when it's done. This is fine for one-off tasks, but as we get more embodied agents and generalist passive computing interfaces, it's insufficient. Now, Sam points out that human brains do a really good job of filtering out extra or extraneous stimulus, and that if AI agents like AutoGPT could do this, it would give them a lot more potential to become real-time assistants. They decided that a first step in this problem was this sort of information batching. They write, Stim can monitor your messages and intelligently help you handle them based on relevance to what you're currently doing. Messages come in from anywhere, they're given an initial priority and a topic, then batched with relevant existing topics if available. The main agent examines topics, decides what's relevant based on its real-time conversation with its user, then surfaces relevant or high-priority items. Now let me pause here to actually zoom out around the state of the development here. A lot of the content that you saw around AutoGPT, call it back in April or May, was excited posts and videos about the first exploratory use cases that people were hacking together. Now, the second wave of content tended to be disappointment about how those tools actually broke and a reassessment of just how production-ready this technology was. What we've seen so far in the finalists at this AutoGPT hackathon include, yes, some end-user applications like the Travel GPT that we were just discussing, but a lot more infrastructure and intermediary solutions that are trying to solve for very specific problems that relate to discrete workflows that are designed to help AI agents ultimately achieve their full potential. So again, the STEM team here has recognized information filtering as a big challenge for an AI agent to actually make for a good assistant and is going specifically at that. Now, interestingly, they do have some examples of use cases that help bring this idea to life. One that they give is as a Discord developer relations agent. In other words, an agent that sits inside a Discord server, batches the conversations going on by topic, and assigns priority scores based on relevance, and has the ability to elevate things that seem really relevant. Sam writes, e.g., single bug report comes in, given a low priority, but 50 come in at once so that priority is elevated and the user is interrupted to highlight the problem. At the same time, someone posts 50 memes about the Roman Empire, which gets deprioritized. Now, I'm not going to read his full assessment about what remained difficult about this build. I'll include a link in the show notes. But basically, you see a real maturation here, where Sam and the other teams are able to assess the barriers that stand in their way as they're trying to build these various applications and tooling. Now, the last finalist that Alex mentioned was called Engagement Farmers. It was an AI agent that acted like Redditors and that could engage with community posts and leave comments. It didn't take long, however, from the IP address to be banned by Reddit. I think a big takeaway here is just how much interest in these tools there really is. Developers literally flew in from all over the world to participate in this hackathon, and by all accounts came away energized and ready to work on their various startups addressing different parts of this equation. Speaking of, let's do a quick breeze through of some of the other big projects in the space and where they are right now. Div Garg, who I had on the show a couple months ago, and who is the founder of Multion, tweeted a couple days ago, We unlocked a big achievement in AI. Very excited to announce that our web AI agent in default mode now runs faster than the human speed of clicking and typing. The implications are potentially huge. This makes it irrelevant for you to manually interact with the web, as our AI can just do it faster and better. Now, as you know, one of the big things that I often talk about on this show, especially when it comes to my skepticism around AI assistant tools, is the question of what it would take for the average user to shift behaviors, such as ordering food or ordering an Uber, from the current way that they do things now, through specific apps or web interfaces, to a more natural language AI-assisted AI agent type of interface. I still don't know what the answer to that question is, and I don't think that speed alone is an answer, but I do think that Div is right to recognize that AI agents being able to perform tasks faster than humans manually could is, if not a sufficient condition, absolutely a necessary one for AI agents to really be personal assistants in the way that many of these entrepreneurs are imagining. So I continue to be excited about what they are building over there, and of course, how fast they're moving. Div's worth a follow because in a lot of ways, what they're doing over there at Multion is just trying out different use cases of their own tool. This is classic entrepreneurial dogfooding, but done in public. Super AGI is another open source framework for building autonomous agents. And just a few days ago, they announced something called Super AGI Models. Basically, this gives users the ability to select from multiple different open source models in the design of their specific AI agents. Indeed, Super AGI also released a playground feature that allows developers to experiment with those models without having to set up a local dev environment. The next thing that they're working on is something called large agentic models or LAMs. These are open source models that are fine-tuned on domain-specific knowledge, and in that way are specialized to work within specific use cases that require understanding in that particular area. Super AGI is also participating in something called Hacktoberfest, which is a month-long virtual hackathon, as well as an upcoming autonomous AI agent hackathon in Sydney, Australia, on October 20th through 22nd. 
So TLDR, lots of energy continues to flow into this AI agent space. And importantly, for those of you who care about actually having outputs that are useful, a lot less of it is cool theoretical applications, and a lot more of it is building the necessary infrastructure, tooling, and intermediate solutions that give other developers the ability to actually build the tools that people want. This continues to be one of the most dynamic parts of the AI space, and so I will continue to cover it as makes sense. For now, I appreciate you guys listening or watching, and until next time, peace.